Oh shit, I don't have my little bar at the bottom. Where's the bar? Status bar? There we go. Status bar. Now I know how long I've been going on for. This vlog is going to be a complete mess. But um, this is definitely one of those that I should have like written out beforehand. And I might realize that like 15 minutes in and then redo it later. But um, it is one that I wanted to talk about and I'm still interested in. Um, because there's going to be an interactive element to this. <clears throat> Not like exciting like you think, like give me a high five right now, right there, do it, do it. Oh, you almost just broke your fucking computer or your phone. <clears throat> I'm sorry about that. Also, today is my day off and I woke up with a sore throat, so I'm super happy about that. It's a great day uh, here at whatever the fuck you want to call this place. I was going to say Chick-fil-A and maybe it is, but I don't know that. So what are we talking today? Today, we're talking about Chainsaw Man. Where, where's my face? There it is. Funk, are you trying to do a thumbnail? It's never gonna, it's never gonna pick that one, okay? Hey, anyways, why are we talking about Chainsaw Man? Um, when you bought the sixth one a while ago, and you haven't bought the seventh one now, and you probably should. We're talking about Chainsaw Man because I really fucking like Chainsaw Man. And you might think, wait a second, Funk, didn't I, Patch Wolf, just do a video on Chainsaw Man? Is that why you're doing this? Do you just want to be his buddy or something? And the answer is, like, well, yeah, fuck, yes, of course, of course I do. But that's never going to happen, and all I'm going to do is read Chainsaw Man. And you know what? It'll have been worth it because, you know what, this fucking shit, shit's good. Shit's good, and I'm glad that I have picked up the series i've been reading the manga um i'm only up to volume six as of this point i mean i finished it i've watched i've watched it can you watch a manga? i guess technically you do but you you read it that's that's what i'm getting at um and goddamn it's very good it is very good i'm a show for this manga because like every once in a while it seems like one of those series sorts of comes along that that makes me feel things and this time it's chainsaw man shit like gurren lagan fully coolie it's like it's always anime i don't know what it is about like anime that does that but like every once in a while every good couple of years just when i think that i'm getting out it pulls me back in with some series that i'm like fuck this is the real shit you know what i'm saying saying like i've been watching power rangers for two months and that shit's not really the real shit it's fun to watch, and I keep watching it because I'm just morbidly curious about where they'll go with it. But, like, it's not the real shit. This is the real shit right here, man. It's so good. Today's topic is pieces of media that are the real shit. Indeed. The ones that tickle your fancy, like, just perfectly, and knows how to tweak your literary nerves like that. So, we're going to talk a little bit about Chainsaw Man, why I think it's so fucking good and like a couple of other series before it and we're going to talk about that in a holistic way where i'm like what the fuck is it what the fuck is it that these series do so right i don't know why i'm dropping so many f-bombs today i'm sorry i'm sorry about that you have my apologies i'll write you a letter it's fine um so why is chainsaw man so good it's about a guy with a, like chainsaws coming out of his face where is he there he is we're not doing the hair thing again uh, it's a guy about it, like, he's, like, the chainsaw comes out of his face and his arms. Um, why is that even good? Well, because this is a thoroughly modern tale. This is a tale written with the nihilism of the millennial generation and Generation Z, like, fully in mind. You know what I mean? It's able to deconstruct the shonen tropes of yesteryear here in such a way that makes it relatable to a current audience. I mean, fuck, dude. Denji's basically, like... The, the Naruto of a new generation because he's relatable. Like in the early 2000s, we were all hopped up on sugar and really hopeful about what was to come because we were fucking idiots who didn't have hindsight, in fairness. Um, you know, so uh, that was the kind of shonen protagonist that like we were interested in. But like Denji is the next thing because he's not like that at all. Denji really likes fucking bread he doesn't like fucking bread he just likes he likes bread 
Red. Okay, look, I can't do this without echoing Eye Patch Wolf's video on this for a second, but he's got it. He's got it exactly right. You know, Goku wants to be the strongest. You know what I'm saying? Naruto wants to be Hokage. Boy wants to be king. That's basically it's basically what it is. Luffy also wants to be king. But like of the pirates and not the ninjas cuz that's that's where we are. Um you know, shonen protagonists generally have some pretty big ideas about what they want to do and often they are prodigies that are uh very well equipped to achieve those sorts of goals um denji just wants a sandwich <laughs> like he does his goals are always very provincial um he like he loves whoever will give him food and shelter and it's like you know the thing is, Denji starts out with, like, nothing. He starts out living in a shed with his dog, um, just happy to live another day, and very unafraid to go to work fighting demons for a living, even though he's, like, a teenager who has lost part of his his limbs. I think he also, he's only got one eye when the manga starts. I forget what happens. Um, but, like, it's really that millennial mindset that Denji is willing to take anyone who will have him you know, and he's happy to have just the basic needs in life, which is what we're all trying to get. You know what I'm saying? That's where we're at. We're like, dude, if I got a roof over my head, a couple bucks and like every now and then I can maybe buy like manga and shit like that's that's great. That's like, you know, that's the dream just to have a house, just to have the basic things, you know, that we need to survive is, is a is it like these days that's like that's like hitting a lottery and owning a and owning a mansion like ba like back in my day that was the dream you didn't want just a house like you weren't going to be satisfied with some three bedroom rancher it was like i'm going to have a mansion and it's going to have a fountain and a pool and a ball pit and it's like all right dude just calm down calm down calm down you know it's just like you want to you got to have you got to have dental first man you gotta have dental, dental, and you know what? Denji gets some dental, Denji dental. That's amazing. Don't do actually, I guess. Um, so yeah, my point is, is that this is a really interesting modern manga, and like, there's a lot of shows and and movies and media that try to make that work, but only ever view it from like a top down perspective or something, where it's like they're trying really hard to capture that that um you know the the zeitgeist of the of the modern generation but um like i always feel like i feel like a lot of those end up shallow i feel like it's a lot of like socio-political commentary or like wow we're gonna make jokes about how high the rent is because like it's really high and i can't afford it and that's funny but like Chainsaw Man doesn't really treat that as a joke. It just treats it as a fact, which I think is very nice. You know, Denji reflects on his his poor upbringing and the insane amount of shit he's had to go through just to keep living today. <laughs> um, you know, and it's never really treated as this as a, as a joke. It's just like part of his character that you accept and you feel like you really feel for him. You're really like he's he's dumb as bricks. But, like, anything he wants to do, you're like, okay, baby, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. You want to love this girl? You want to touch You want to touch boobies? Like, let's make it happen. I'm cheering for you. I'm totally cheering for you. And that's the other thing. Fucking Denji is really bad at relationships. He doesn't know what it's like to be loved by another human being. He doesn't understand the concept of true affection. You know, it, his, his first arc is about wanting to touch a boob. Fucking... Cue the eye patch wolf footage, just whatever, whatever. But like, it, it's really short, by the way. That it, it's it's like way shorter than I thought it would be. But like, he does, and the point of it isn't like that. It was this next goal, and then he's like escalating it. No, it reverses because when he gets that thing, he's like, "Oh shit, that was disappointing." And you get to watch him go through this like existential crisis trying to figure out how to have human emotions while still being this demon that can drink blood to regrow limbs like aren't we all aren't we all just demons needing to drink blood to regrow limbs i think we are 
All right. But it's just like, it's beautiful. I don't know. I could go on and on about why this series is good, but I think it's written in such a way that it doesn't feel pandery. It doesn't feel like it's trying to appeal to the kids. It just does. It just treats the situations as fact, which is how they are in our life. It's like, yeah, we'll joke about it. I've been joking about it this entire time that I'm like, you know, a full fledged adult and I could not afford a house, you know, if I wanted to, um, you know, but like Chainsaw Man treats it like a fact and that's good. You know, I don't know how to, I don't know how to describe it any better than that. This is why I see this is why I need scripts, um, and, and to follow them. But I think you get that idea. The cool thing about the way Chainsaw Man is written though, is that it is actually very funny despite that. <laughs> It's about a bunch of people who are trying to be a little more human. Um, you know, Power is a great character because she's like, you can tell she's super annoying, but you can also tell that she's got this like human side to her that she would never admit is growing, but totally is. Like, and it's just, it's fun to watch her become more protective of like Denji and Aki because like, she doesn't have to and she doesn't like acknowledge it there's no point thus far where she stops and she's like i think i'm starting to like you people no she's still a little shit to them and lies about things she said two seconds ago and that's what makes her an entertaining character because she's consistent you know and even a try hard like aki who's just a normal dude who has like the most sincere motivations for anything out of the three of them and tries to be the most serious like, you just get to see him grow as a person and, like, face his own version of hardship and have to overcome his weakness in the face of, you know, working with demons who can drink blood to regrow limbs. He can't do that. He's just a dude. But, like, he's willing to do anything it takes. And you get it. Like, the way Chainsaw Man is written is so good because you get it. Like, you don't expect, like, you just look at Aki and, he's, and you're like, oh, he's another fucking Sasuke. Who gives a shit? But, like, you do because, like, everything is rooted in this, like, simple shit. Like, he doesn't want to be alone. He smokes because his buddy Himeno smokes. And he trusts her to not die. Don't pause. Funk, don't pause. Funk, you can't pause there. You can't do that. Funk! Anyways, um, Himeno is great, by the way. I love her character. She's so awesome, and I want an eye patch woman. Um, seriously, it's like it's actually it's actually wild how fun her character is, and how much of Aki's character she actually explains. Like I don't know, it's just it's cute. Go watch Eye Patch Wolf's video. It's very good about it. This is an ad for that, but no, seriously, I was actually kind of surprised by how much I like Chainsaw Man because there are some things I do not agree with. Agree with like you know a lot of people that I respect, love Mother 3. And I don't love Mother 3. That game was hyped up way too much. I watched one video on Chainsaw Man, and I'm like, you know, I was like, you know what, I'll try it. It was right place, right time. That's really what it was. I was finally like, you know what, I'm going to fucking do this. But, um, because I could be reading Berserk. Fucking come at me. I'm not, I'm not doing that yet. I want to. I would, I would like that, actually, very much. I bet you I would like that one, too. But I'm kind of glad I went with Chainsaw Man instead, A, because it's way shorter and I can just fucking buy the books rather than go read it online, which makes me feel a little dirty sometimes inside. But, like, you know. Anyways, Chainsaw Man is really good. It's funny because the characters are goofy and over-the-top and ridiculous. And, like, I just, I love that. And I love when stories do that. It's the same thing that happened with Gurren Lagann where that's one of my favorite anime ever because it starts out so goofy and silly that it makes you really like the characters. And it's only once in a blue moon that I feel like a story can really pull that off. Like Kamina in Gurren Lagann, like you get sold on him as a character. He is a stupid goof who does not deserve his victories, but totally earns his victories by being indefatigably optimistic. Like... His optimism should run out at some point, and it doesn't, and he just keeps everyone going, and it's so good, and it's just, like, one of the reasons why I love that show, but, like, it uses that, it leverages that to make him a fucking hilarious character, um, of whom there have been many copies, um, who are not as successful 
And then like, but but like he boosts all the other characters up because he makes Simone and Nia's relationship that much more interesting. He makes Yoko have actual feelings. Like it's just I don't know. Gurren Lagann's really good, guys. I like it. I like it a lot. Fully Cooley kind of does the same thing, where it's all goofiness, silliness, zany zaniness, LOL, randoms, but it can still give you the feels. It still takes that moment to have now to look up at the sky and go, shit. It has a soundtrack that makes me go, shit. And I just fucking love it. Go watch, go watch Fully Cooley. Now, Fully Cooley is only six episodes, so you can binge watch it in one night like my friend did, and you will not regret it. The only thing that you don't, won't regret about it is that you're not 12, unless you are 12, in which case, stop watching my videos. I don't need to get sued, but I don't think any of you are 12. What was I talking about? Fully Cooley? Fully Cooley is really great. Fully Cooley is the OG for me. I need to do videos on Fully Cooley, and I want to, because it does the same thing. It like it's super funny and weird and wacky, but it pulls it off. It makes the characters likable in a way it wouldn't have otherwise. And it's weird because normally I like I also like serious sorts of things. I love Fire Emblem Seven, and that game's not very funny. Path of Radiance is also not that very funny. Funny, and then there are the games that try to be funny, like taking a Fire Emblem example again. Again, um, like Fates tries to be funny, but it never really feels like genuine. It always feels like it's just trying to be funny to be funny to try to endear you to these characters, but it never naturally works. You know what I mean? I don't know. Well, Fates in particular is kind of a weird one, but um. Yeah. Oh, Xenoblade 2 is actually a really good example of that, too, where it tries to be funny in order to endear you to its characters. But for some reason, the comedy for me just doesn't land, I guess, because a lot of it is like hackneyed and not really based on the situation. It's just like I every time every time I think about the writing in Xenoblade 2, I think about the scene where Rex tries to um, haul Pyra up with his 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 grappling hook. And she steps on it, and he's like, so heavy! And then everyone's embarrassed, and then fucking Gramps comes up, and he's like, you shouldn't call a lady heavy. And it's, like, supposed to be this funny thing, but it's really just this thing that's taken five minutes from my fucking life, because they all could have, because because what happens is Poppy flies up and then pulls her up anyway, which is like, why didn't you just fucking start with that? You gotta let Rex embarrass himself a little bit. It makes me not like Rex. Oh, God. God bless the boy. He's a Chad now. That trailer came out Tuesday. God damn, look at him. He had a glow up. But like, Jesus Christ, man. There were a couple of moments like that in that game where it was just like, this is not necessary. This is not like woven into the plot in such a way that I that it makes me give a shit about these characters. It's not necessarily funny or cute character traits. It's just these silly situations that wouldn't have felt out of place in a 90s anime. And it was kind of funny then, but it also like gets not so funny later. So it's that kind of thing. I think Xenoblade 3 does better because it doesn't try to be funny like that. It really does take itself a little more seriously, and I think it benefits for that. Why am I not talking about the first game? I don't know. The first game has moments of levity, too, but, like, they're very well curated because there's not a whole lot of that in the beginning. Um, and, like, I think there's a difference between endearing and then, like, trying to do comedy for, for comedy's sake. So I think that's that's kind of a, a point. And I use Xenoblades, the Xenoblades as an example because I really like that. Um... The World Ends With You is another good example that I have to talk about because I'm obligated to talk about The World Ends With You in pretty much every fucking video I ever make. Um, but yeah, uh, The World Ends With You does it fairly well. I think The World Ends With You is a solid balance because there are parts of it that are funny, um, like the fucking button scene. Like, that part is is pretty funny the first time you watch it, but it also, like, means something to the plot because the whole plot is about Neku and Shiki building their relationship for the, across this week. Like, and that's a part of it. That's a moment of it because, you know, we get to see that like Shiki is like unmovable on some things. And it's like, I don't know. I think the world ends with you does it really well, which is why it's still one of my favorites. Um, 
So here's the part of it that's interactive, right? I want you to A, this is the easy part. Tell me some of your favorite stories and what they get right. Because I want to know, like, especially if there's one that's like mysterious to you. Like, have you ever like watched something or played something or read something that like, that just like knocks it out of the park? Like, it just gets you in particular tonally. Because me, I like goofy shit that leads into more emotional shit. Like, Chainsaw Man does it impeccably. Um, because <laughs> shit's hilarious. I have never seen a scene, and it actually happens in this volume, where a guy... It fucking... It, it, where, like, I almost feel like I have to find it. We're back to talking about Chainsaw Man, by the way. Okay, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I'm gonna find it. Hang on. Can't show that. It literally has has this fucking like page. Like, look at this guy's face. Like, it has this this fully cool. Hang on. This fully coolie ass page of an angel looking up into the sky. Right. Like that's fucking deep. And then it's intercut with this dude getting kicked in the nuts. I have never had a more emotional scene about a dude getting kicked in the nuts. And it's like amazing that Chainsaw Man sells it. And I love that. And I love that that exists because like as a guy who is creative and writes and like develops characters and shit, it's like, I'm, I want that. I fucking, I want that. Anyways, so your, your job is to um, name a story that gets it completely right tonally with you what kind of tone do you like if you like a serious and completely realistic tone where all of the characters make sound decisions because i find that impressive when i can't when it when a piece of media can feel totally realistic and it doesn't feel like anyone's making stupid decisions for the sake of plot i think that's really impressive and i can see where people would love that do you like things that are tonally very serious where it's like you know, a, a Greek tragedy or something? Do you like things that are, you know, serious? Do you like levity? Do you like funny things? What series, game, or writing just knocks it out of the park and feels tailor-made for your tastes? That's the first thing I want you to do. And I want you to tell me, you can tell me about that in the comments or like in a video, because there's a second part to this this prompt that's going to be a little harder and may require you to make vlogs of your own. In fact, that that's that's really what I want you to do. Please make vlogs about this. Make vlog. You can make vlogs about the first question, but the second question is uh, for those of you who are all, also creative, or if you're not creative, I want you to do it anyway because being creative is wonderful, and I want you to feel that. Think about that series and what it does right tonally, and then I want you to come up with the actual perfect series. Try to come up with a concept, but think about what the perfect piece of media would look like to you. And you can be like, yeah, it already exists. It's Final Fantasy VII. It's perfect. I wouldn't change anything except that all of the characters would be Tifa. Sorry, DeadSec, I'm calling you out. It's like a tradition for me to call you out in like all these vlogs because I know you're watching. So like, I don't know. Or talk about a piece of media that is also, that is almost perfect. And talk about what would make it like perfect for you. Talk about like what you would think, what what is missing for you that other things have that you really enjoy. I don't know. Just talk about shit that really gets you as a person. Because like the second part of this is creative. I know I've already said that, but like, fuck, this is a vlog. I'm doing it off the cuff. You know how it is. Um, but like it's creative because every time I read something like Chainsaw Man, I'm really trying for that thumbnail, aren't I? Every time I read something like Chainsaw Man, I'm like, damn, why haven't I written that yet? And it's funny because I haven't. And I haven't really tried to write anything like that. Oh, shit, I just thought of another really good example of this. Scott Pilgrim is a really fucking good example because it's so funny and goofy and silly, but you do kind of get emotionally invested in the characters, especially the especially in the manga or the graphic novel or whatever you want to fucking call it. So there's that. Take that. Take that with you. That's a that's a good one. That one even has rock music in it, and that's rare for the like, for like all the other ones. Um, but yeah, so um, come up with try to come up with a concept of what 
would really do it for you if you were to write the ultimate story like what would it be about what story do you think needs to be in the world how does it relate to what you love tonally and like how would you try to get that across to other people because i've always wanted to write like a really funny story um that also has a really good concept um but i've never really just i've never really had that idea like all of my stories tend to be like more serious affairs that are written pretty seriously um and i guess i don't try to like make humor because i'm not very good at it or at least i don't think i'm very good at it um particularly in my writing like there are some parts like in the story that i'm writing now that will make me like giggle um, when I when I think about them and it's just I'll just add stupid shit like um, in the background someone's like pull it like just like zipping zipping up tight because they don't want to talk about this like that's that's my kind of thing but like I don't know like I guess the thing that I would really love to write is something that's funny something that makes people laugh but also makes them think because tonally that's absolutely what I love I would love to make something like fully coolly like chainsaw man you know that is just like super funny but also really gets at the thing that i want it to get i don't know that i could write chainsaw man because i don't necessarily have denji's experience i can relate to it in certain ways because you know i live in a generation where getting the things you need is a challenge in and of itself no matter like what you are um so like you know, I don't know that I could write Chainsaw Man or Gurren Lagann, and I've tried to write Gurren Lagann, and I've never succeeded. Um, back after I watched that show, um, I wrote a story at, it, that comes to mind called Pokemon Underground, which was about underground cities being kept underground on purpose by the evil Pokemon. It was Gurren Lagann, but Pokemon. And I had a character that was a clone of Kamina, and it was just like, I, I enjoyed writing it, and I think it was an interesting idea, but it didn't like it didn't work on that level. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's just I felt like I've never actually tried to write my version of the world ends with you, you know, or or any of these other things that are like super funny, but also touching and human. I think it's very hard to write um, like what makes a person human, what makes a character feel real what makes the a character feel beloved and enjoyable and just all of that you know what i mean because i think all of that contributes i know the questions are all over the place but like write them all down and then see if you can answer them like like i don't know i feel like we've all thought about that and i want to know where people are at creatively because i know like a lot of people that like watch my vlogs and hang out are creative um and i want to hear that story you know i want to hear what would be the perfect piece of media for you um you know take take pieces take different elements of shows and movies and games that you like put that in, and put them together you know it could be the you know the uh the wonderful creative setting of xenoblade but mixed with the you know um creativity and and casual nature of the you know of the camaraderie and in, in the world ends with you and you put them together and it makes this beautiful thing like you don't necessarily have to know how it works you don't have to come up with like a story and a characters but like i would love to hear like concepts like if i were to do this i i think the ultimate story that i will write one day will be about um like presence your presence online right um, and I feel like a lot has been written about that, but like the story I want to write and that I feel really needs to be in the world and, and, and one that I feel really qualified to write, but I haven't figured it out yet, um, is one about how we can be several people to like in our lives and all, all like outward facing to other people. You know what I mean? I want to write persona basically like the persona games are meant to like exemplify that because you have the personas that you put on for all the different people but like they've gotten away from that i feel like um but i really want to write about that like if you had like a character who was actually several different characters right because that's how i feel in my life i feel like i am several different characters and it's a face i put on it's like you know what do you do how do you react how do you build yourself 
when you have like four different names and personalities, right? Because it's like there's like there's not only just like me at home and me at work. There's like streamer me. There's like, you know, the funk version of me, the version of me that exists at MAGFest, the version of me that exists in like one specific Discord server, and then a similar version of me that is actually very different that exists in another Discord server. You know, the names and personalities that I've made for myself, my presence on different Twitter pages, like, you know, it's, it's you know, I, I think it's pretty safe to say for me that like, you know, I have multiple presences online. Um, and many of them are very different, but they all express a different part of myself. And I think that's okay because the relationships that have come out of that are beautiful. And, you know, some of it's, it's funny and it's wacky and it's zany. And I feel like there is a really good story because like the way that I've met people, the way that I've connected with people all over is really a beautiful thing. And I think that a story like that could be funny could have a really interesting setting, could have really interesting down-to-earth characters, and I think could come very close to conveying an entire-ass person. Because I think one of the biggest issues with characters is that they're not, like, characters are always written to serve a plot, but you can never fit an entire human into a character because we are just way too complex and there's just way too much shit going on. Um, but like, I feel like if you tell a story about the internet and all of the people, all of the different people that you are, I don't know. I think that could really be like worth something. Um, so I kind of feel like that's, that's my big idea. And you can talk about something like that. Like it's a concept, but these tones go into it. You know what I mean? I think that would be the, I think that would be the thing for me, because I think that that is a very modern concept that a lot of people can relate with. You know, and I there's and for me, that's a huge concept because there's so much you can go with. You can talk about the noise of social media. You know what I mean? The fact that people only exist on some of these platforms just to piss people off. Right. Like that's all they do because they think it's fun. Meanwhile, other people, it's like their entire livelihood. Like the people that they piss off are like so pissed off that they like can't even fucking like deal with it anymore and like want to burn humanity for that. You know, it's like. I don't know. It's such an interesting topic that I think in media has has really gone untapped. I think it, it's one of those things that like, you know, like the uh, uh, the modern Gen Z millennial outlook that Chainsaw Man has is something that often that is often written about, but very, very often under, misunderstood as well and made the butt of jokes. You know what I mean? It's like it's like, uh, oh, like Sword Art Online, right? Like Sword Art Online is is. You know, it speaks to people because that shit really does happen. Like, not the part about the where if you die in the game, you die for it. Like, that obviously doesn't happen yet. But uh, humans are dumb enough. I think I think I read somewhere that that's actually a thing that will exist, which is dumb. Anyway, um, so there's that. But, like, it also doesn't get to the core of, like, how you change yourself. It's always, like... I'm really hot in the game, but I'm really frumpy in real life, and I'm not like that at all. But it's like, not really. There's like elements of you that exist. In both. Anyways, that's my concept, and I guess I could expound upon it further in, a, in another vlog later on, um, especially because I'm expecting all of you to do the same and put a lot of man hours into thinking about the kind of story you would want. Because um, I think there's that kind of story missing for, for everybody. And it's like, I mean, this was a big deal to me. Finding Chainsaw Man and being like, wow, this is a story that actually gets it um, was really cool. And I, I really enjoyed that about it. And I'm looking forward to reading the rest. Um, so, you know, I think it's great. I, I, again, I really could talk about, like, you know, a whole lot of other shit in Chainsaw Man. But it really inspired me because, of what, like, while I was reading it, while I was reading through some of it, I don't know what, what volume it was, I like paused and I was like, you know what? I'm sad. I'm sad that this exists and I didn't write it. Um, and I'm sad that this exists and it's so fucking good. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just watch something good or you experience a good story and you're just like, shit. I just like, I w I like this speaks to me and I, and it's, it's sad that I can't speak to myself like this. I don't know. It's a little bit weird. Um, but yeah, Funk Creative Challenge, numero uno. Tell me about the pieces of media 
that speak to you. Tell me about the ones that got it exactly right that matched your tone and your personality and spoke to your experience in a way you did not expect but is like more perfect than you could ever think of, right? So like, tell me about that. Tell me about those kinds of pieces of media and then tell me about the ultimate story. Tell me about the ultimate story that like you would wish to tell or, or whatever. And I want to see those. I'm going to see those videos or those comments or whatever because I want to know and I want to hear those and I want to I want to like let's write some stories together because that's I love I love doing that actually. It's so fun. I don't get to do it often enough. I want people to be creative and I want people to make vlogs and shit. So here we are. Anyways, this vlog is 35 minutes long um, and that's about enough time. So I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Please enjoy the rest of your day and stuff. Oh, it's Valentine's Day, by the way. So happy Valentine's Day. Have a good one. Be creative. Give me, give me that, give me that shit. Give me, give me that shit. Hang on.